Okay, welcome back to, uh, well, I guess my picnic table in my backyard. Under normal circumstances, we're typically talking about different uh, products that you can find that I encounter through, you know, learning about firearms, continuous improvement type process for me. Uh, but today, you're also going to get the opportunity, dare I say pleasure, of seeing me strip down into a pair of short shorts, throw on a plate carrier, and disturb everybody at my local community indoor pool. That's because today we're going to talk about Armored Republic's P2 plates that they sent me. These are polyethylene plates, but I'll get to that in just a second. Before I get started though, this channel is absolutely not sponsored by PMC Ammunition, but it totally could be. Full disclosure part of the video. Armored Republic sent these plates and this plate carrier to me. We have a relationship with Armored Republic over on the Funker 530 team. We absolutely love their products, but they didn't pay us a dime for this video, uh, nor for the subsequent review that comes with it. Now, Armored Republic's P2 is a level three tested and capable plate. Level three means that it should effectively stop things up to and including 5.56 and 193s. So that's what we're gonna be shooting with today. This is 55, 55 grain uh, full metal jacket boat tail it should be moving at right around 3,100 feet per second out of my 16 inch Geisley. I'm also going to hit it today with 124 millimeter, 9 millimeter. This is actually my carry ammunition, so this is going to be Federal HSTs. I've just been meaning to shoot this out of literally the worst gun purchase I've ever made a semi automatic vector in 9 millimeter. But let's talk about the P2 for a second. I'm not going to take them out of here because I've got B roll of me flopping and flipping it around uh, that I'll be running. But I want to talk about specifications. So again, this is tested at NIJ level three. It's 3.3 pounds per plate and it's one inch thick. Now this is polyethylene. So that's UHN WPE or ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. Now it's those fibers wrapped around HDPE, high density, high density polyethylene. That's, that's effectively what gives you in totality the plate itself. Now, one of the things that they specifically mentioned about the P2 is its natural buoyancy. That's where the pool comes into play. Is I believed them, you know, it, it makes a whole lot of sense. I just quite honestly wanted to see what it was like to try to swim uh, wearing a plate carrier. And I also thought it'd be kind of funny to see everybody looking at me weird wearing short shorts and a plate carrier. I'm going to hit it three times with each of these calibers. We're going to take the plates out and look at them. And then I'm going to hit them again until they fail. Hopefully I have enough rounds for that. It should be good. Let's go get the plate set up. There's a GoPro down there to capture some slow-mo stuff too. All right, so Terry's down there. He's all loaded up, ready for war. And I've got three rounds of M193 loaded into my magazine here. Uh, we're gonna hit it again with the 16 inch barrel out of my Geisley. Uh, I'm gonna try for top, middle, and then two in the lower corners. There's one. Two. Three. All right, so now what I gotta do, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab it, I'm gonna turn it around on Terry and I'm going to hit it with three rounds of the 124 grain nine millimeter uh, hollow points. Again, these are federal HSTs. This is what I carry. Be right back. All right, yes. I forgot to put my glasses on. I don't know, get over it. So now uh, I, I've got Terry all set up and ready to receive rounds from the nine millimeter vector. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be firing four rounds this time. My first round, I'm just gonna make sure this thing's zeroed because I haven't shot it in such a long time. But there'll be four rounds shot here. Uh, the remaining three, as long as we have a good zero still, are gonna go just into the plate. First round, check zero. Should be good. All right, first round in the plate. Second round in the plate. Third round in the plate.
Let's go see what we got. From here, I'm going to bring everything back up this way. We're going to take a look at the plate carrier as well as both the front and back plates. The front plates were shot with 556 uh, XM 193. The rear plate was shot with 124 grain uh, solid gold bullion. Vector kind of tore that round up. Anyway, be right back. All right, let's take a look. Round, round, round. That one hit right in the corner. Here, here, and here. That was with the vector. And the AR is here. I know it might be hard to see. Here, and then somewhere in here. All right, so my camera overheated. <clears throat> right in the middle of me saying what I was saying. I can already feel as though there's probably not going to be too much back face deformation on this, in a relative sense, at least. And I'm wondering if, you know, back face deformation was partially mitigated by the fact that it's in the carrier, uh, at least attached to something resembling a human body. Uh, the first I want, to, I want to take a look at is the AR side. So I'm going to pull this out with the camera rolling here. That, fit, that looks good. That looks really good. So this is the side that was shot with the AR. On the back face there, very, very little deformation. So it lives up, what the shit? I might need a different mount. So, anyway, so it lives up to the rifle rating for uh, being tested to NIJ level three. Let's take a look at the nine mil. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put this back down there, I'm gonna shoot it till it fails. One got pretty close to the edge here. You'd say there's about, about an inch and a half or so. Fared really well against that. Barely any other back face deformation here. I was trying to essentially, I need to shift that group a little bit to the left here. But that's the pattern I was trying to shoot for. Uh, so again, now I'm gonna load, um, within the standard capacity allowable in my magazine, which is going to be sub 20 rounds, YouTube. I'm gonna load everything that I've got up into, that I brought out here, which is only a single box, uh, and I'm gonna just gonna set it on a log, and I'm gonna burn it up, and uh, see if we can get through it. All right, I'm about redneck five yards away, and I've got like 15 rounds or so. I'm just gonna hit it. Maybe I just need to hit it faster. The second double went through. All right, so let's talk about that for a second. Did this perform at the expectations I had for it? Yeah. Yeah, it actually exceeded them, especially relative to back face deformation. Did I expect it to get very far this close uh, with XM193 out of a 16 inch barrel? No, no. And uh, as soon as we let loose on that uh, double tap, that second, that second round punched right through. But we've essentially, torn a hole through the UHM WPE here. 
in all, it stands up to the capabilities of AR-500 or Armored Public's claims that it is multi-hit capable uh, for rounds that are fired from a rifle. We fired from a rifle today, uh, XM-193, 16-inch uh, barrel, and it stopped those first three rounds. They were in geographically disparate locations, but it's extremely lightweight, it's buoyant, and still provides some level of protection with that trade-off on the weight. All right, so there's a lot of misconceptions about how armor works and that if you have armor, then it should be able to stop X amount of capabilities or uh, Y amount of situations. In a situation like this, there are a lot of folks that might be wondering, well, why would this be an armor that I want? Now, this is my opinion on this, was not paid for, paid for my opinion. Polyethylene armor is the trade it's going to be less capable than some of the heavier options that are out there. Now, this survived all of, its, all, all of what it was tested to survive. Uh, it met three rounds of M193 with next to no challenge. As soon as I started hitting it in the same location, though, that's where we started to see a failure. So you have to take those types of things into account. If you expect to be hit 17 times, you know, inside of a fist side size area, maybe polyethylene, polyethylene isn't for you. Right? If you expect to encounter threats that are beyond your standard FMJ type ammunition, you know, things other than M80 ball or 193, um, something with a penetrator, for instance, 855, 855A1, things along those lines, maybe polyethylene isn't for you. If you're in, if you're in a maritime environment, say you might need the additional buoyancy capabilities just in case you fall off a boat or something. I don't know. I don't do stuff near water. I live near the mountains. But if you are, that might be a consideration for you. The decision for what armor you employ is wholly dependent upon what you expect to encounter. That's gonna be it for me, guys. If you do end up deciding to pick up a set of this P2 armor from Armored Republic, I'll have a link down below that supports the channel. Uh, thanks very much to them for sending it out to us. I appreciate you guys very much. Thanks to PMC for the eventual sponsorship of the channel because I shoot a lot of your ammunition, like a lot of it. I'm out of here. We'll catch you next time and stay informed. They'd probably also work pretty well as bullet resistant floaties. Depends upon how you think about it. Bet you could just take some duct tape and